How does the structure of the famous Pompidou Centre here in Paris actually work? This, this is the famous facade, right? The piazza that everyone gathers on. You see this with the escalator going up and this sort of facade full of vertical, horizontal, diagonal rods. But that's not actually where it's all happening. To find out, you're going to follow me around to a little sort of fountain and playground area, around the corner there, and that's where the answers are. Come with me. So once you're here at one of the corners of the Pompidou Centre in Paris, this is where we start to understand how the structure works. I'm going to walk you through it. What we're going to be focusing on at some point are these really interesting sculptural elements. All right, so starting with where the floors are, the plan was to have a column-free interior space. So from here all the way to uh, the column over on the other side, that is about 45 meters, about 150 feet. Clear span, spanned by these Warren Truss members, that are, Warren Trusses that are spanning on each floor. There are six floors total. And with the Warren Truss, you've got compression on the top, so those are larger members than tension on the lower cord. All right, so far, so good, so normal, so easy. Here's the amazing part about the Pompidou Center. These trusses are sitting on a short piece, little arm, that's on a rocker that is going over to a longer arm. So what's happening here? So clearly, compression is coming down these really large columns. That makes sense. But instead of it just being truss sitting on column, it's truss sitting on short arm, sitting on a little rocker. So let me see if I can do this. This thing is rocking back and forth, right? And what stops this rocking in because of the trusses, this, this side, look, let me go here, wants to rock, this, this side of my pinky wants to rock down, so my thumb side wants to go up, which puts this rod, there we go, into tension. That's why this is a solid rod, much thinner, because it's in tension, than the, the bigger round uh, tube steel section that's all in compression. So the famous facade that you can see under the escalator going up there, that famous facade with all of the pieces, that's all in tension. That whole facade is in tension. And that's why all of those members are so thin. And now back to these. These are cast steel elements. They're called gerberets. And they are fantastically optimized and shaped for the forces in them. A rocker curved part to manage the seesaw effect of it and then a moment arm where it's a decrease, sorry, decreasing moment, so decreasing section out to the part where it's grabbing on a bit like the opposite of my shoulder to my hand there. So the reverse of that is happening right there. So this is essentially a sculpted shaped look for the forces that are represented in it. It very much is not just an expressive building of how it performs by all of the uh, machinery, the, the water flow, the movement of people in the escalator and the structure itself, but then all the way down to the piece here that even this item is representative of how it's working. This really is a fantastic collection of an expert, sort of a diagram of the structural forces in it, a diagram of the functioning of the building, very much building as expressed machine. And so you have six floors of this structure. Repeat that 14 times along the, gosh, it's tricky, there we go, along the elevation of the building. And that produces the Pompidou Center, all column free for that 150 foot span in, uh, in the short direction and all the way along the rest of the building. Absolutely spectacular symbol. Uh, Richard Rogers, Renzo Piano. Peter Rice and the other, rest of the team at Arup with a beautiful piazza just past my thumb. I'm looking out on a gorgeous fountain uh, with beautifully designed elements that kids often play in. So come over here to this corner. You can enjoy the fountain and you can understand how the Pompidou Center works. Au revoir.